Dr. Mathers, thanks so much uh, for, for joining us. I, I mean, from what we're seeing, that this looks to be the, the much kind of heralded spring offensive that, that, that's just come a little bit later than we expected. Yes, exactly. I mean, as far as we can tell, uh, this looks like the start of, of the spring offensive, counteroffensive. Um, I think it's worth pointing out, though, that, you know, for some weeks and, and months, really, the Ukrainian forces have been laying the foundation uh, for this action uh, by trying to undermine Russia's ability to wage the war by targeting, uh, you know, behind the, the lines uh, targets such as ammunition and fuel supplies and transport links and commanding headquarters, these kinds of things to try and, and weaken the Russian forces as much as possible before they, they then go on to the offensive with the Western provided weapons and the Western provided training and so on that their, their armed forces have been benefiting from. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember when Zelensky was, was going around the, the European uh, and Western capitals, kind of uh, sh shaking the hat, if you like. He was very specific about the sorts of weapons that he wanted and, and the way in which he wanted to deploy them. So it looks as if there's a, a real plan that's been laid down for how this counteroffensive is going to go. Yes, absolutely. Uh, this will have been planned for, for quite some time, obviously taking into consideration the nature and the extent of, of Western provided weaponry and also training, which is really important to remember that, you know, quite a lot of Ukrainian troops now have benefited from being sent to various Western countries, have received specialized training uh, in, you know, how to use various kinds of equipment, but also in things like tactics um, and then have been sent back. So there's a, a lot of, of effort and resources have been invested in preparing for this counteroffensive and, and, and preparing very carefully. So they, they wanted to kind of take their time in the sense and wait until they felt the moment was, was absolutely right. Now, in terms of the kind of, it's not just the boots on the ground, it's not just the, the, the land that you seize, it's the land that you hold. Are we seeing uh, any breakthrough in terms of control of territory from Ukraine? I think it's too early to say, really, because at the moment you're having you know a lot of very um, conflicting reports from the Ukrainians and from the Russians. The Russians are saying, oh, we've destroyed lots of Western tanks and the Ukrainians are saying, uh, no, we've destroyed lots of Russian tanks and, and so on. So I think what's going to happen is it's going to take several weeks, actually, for us to see any kind of patterns emerging, any kind of trends emerging. You know, are the Ukrainians finding weak spots in the Russians' lines? Are they managing to push through? Are they managing to, to gain territory? And as you say, are they managing to hold anything that they gain? You know, are the Russians, uh, by contrast, standing firm? Are they, you know, repelling the, the Ukrainians' offensive? Uh, are their lines holding really steady? Are, is their morale, um, you know, improving? Because the Russian military's morale has been very poor uh, for, for many, many months now, really almost from the very beginning of, of the mass invasion back in February 2022. So, you know, and, and that's important because that, that affects your fitness to fight because morale and resolve are, are almost a direct correlation in, in terms of, of when it gets to, to really gritty kind of fighting like this. Absolutely. And I think what we need to remember is that many of the most experienced and best trained and most highly professional of the Russian forces um, were lost in those early months of the war. Um, and so, you know, this includes a lot of commanders, a lot of very senior officers, and it's not easy to replace such people. It takes time, training and experience to replace such people. And so a lot of the soldiers who are on the ground are these people who are mobilized quite quickly back in September as a result of Putin's call for partial mobilization. And the degree of training that they have uh, under, undergone is really questionable. I think it's been very patchy. Um, and we've seen a lot of complaints um, on the part of, of Russian soldiers' families uh, that they're being sent to the front uh, without appropriate training and equipment, underprepared, uh, really very vulnerable uh, to, to being killed at the front. And we've seen a lot of those troops killed already. So I think, you know, watching uh, Russian soldiers' morale is going to be a really important part of, of how this counteroffensive unfolds. <laughs>